Hey YouTubers and toy train lovers. One of my uh, subscribers has recently posted a few uploads of his favorite box cars and uh, suggested that we all do the same. And so I decided to make this film. These are my favorite modern box cars from my favorite railroad. So I'd like to know what your favorite railroads are and see you make some films and so I can watch them and we can all share them. Uh, my favorite railroad uh, is the Western, it's a fallen flag railroad, so I would say was the Western Pacific. And uh, I believe it's now Burlington Northern and Santa Fe. But it used to run all the way from Oakland, California to, uh, I believe, uh, Salt Lake City. I'm not sure. Uh, my folks would drive from Chico, California, which is 90 miles north of Sacramento, California, up the Feather River to Reno a couple times a year to play the slot machines. And I remember riding in the back of the car and watching these, as a small child, watching these long lines of trains climb the canyon walls and see all these feathers on them. And as I got older, I realized what they were. They were Western Pacific trains. And the feathers on them represent the Feather River route, which of course we were driving in the car, was Highway 70. And uh, a couple of stories I can tell you about the Feather River route is when I was in Sheriff's Search and Rescue many years ago, when I could still climb up the side of mountains and uh, carry loads, carry people over my shoulders. Uh, a Boy Scout leader took, I believe, six kids down the Feather River in a rubber raft to go rafting, having no idea how treacherous this river is. And it makes the Colorado River look tame. Uh, it's just full of huge boulders and rapids. And, um, of course, they sunk the, uh, the raft. And he got the Boy Scouts. Boy Scouts all got on shore, but it was on the highway side, and they couldn't climb it. It was too s steep. And one managed to swim across, thank goodness, without drowning and flagged down a train. The scout leader had broken his leg and we'd got a call through the county sheriff's department to all those available to come up there and uh, rescue these boy scouts and the scout leader. And I assume we'd be hiking and when we got to the place where we were supposed to meet up. Western Pacific had a inspection vehicle, which was a large pickup truck ready for us. And we climbed into the back of the pickup truck and we had our um, gurney and our hard hats and our climbing outfits. Uh, and they drove us right to where the Boy Scouts were. And the kid was with us and he directed them. And we climbed down and hauled out the Boy Scouts and hauled out the Scoutmaster on a gurney and put an air splint on his leg. And then we had to send the Boy Scouts and the Scoutmaster back on the um, inspection vehicle. There wasn't enough room for all of us and they came back and picked us up and it was really nice all by then all the parents had arrived at our meeting spot 
and picked up the kids. And some of them were just giving that poor scoutmaster hell. Well, they deserved it, you know. At least the kids uh, had life jackets on, but still, it was ridiculous. But I thought Western Pacific came to the rescue. And my second story, let's bring this up to my caboose. My friends and I were hiking around Lake Orville, which is part of the Feather River Canyon. And it, in fact, it, it's a tributary to Lake Orville, it's the Feather River. And we decided to climb up to this big bridge, which had a highway up above it and a railroad down below in a tunnel through a mountain for the railroad. And the highway went over the mountain. And by the time we got up there, we were bushed. I think we we're all probably around 16 or 17. And there was a train stopped. And I think there were a couple of cars and a caboose that stuck out of the tunnel. And this elderly gentleman said hi and waved to us and said, you guys want a cold drink? And we said, yes. He invited us into the caboose. And of course it was a Western Pacific caboose. And he showed us around the caboose and told us how things worked and, and talked about life on the railroad and where he lived. He had a little apartment in Oakland and another one up in Portola which is where the Western Pacific um, Museum is. Uh, Portola is right above Quincy, California on the way to Reno, between Reno and the Sacramento Valley. But uh, never forget how nice this man was and how cool it was to be inside a caboose. Seen him for years, had no idea. I knew what they were for, but I had no idea what they looked like inside. And we're all sitting on his bed, or, or I believe there was a hard wooden bench in there, but there was a sink to wash. There was a, a toilet. And of course, we didn't want to use his toilet. <laughs> we went outside and beat on the side of the train or whatever. But uh, it was it was an absolute thrill. And then he got a a radio call until we all had to get off and get clear of the train. And then the train went through the tunnel. And we were bad kids. We walked, we hiked through the tunnel, which we shouldn't have, but we did. But anyway, those are two of the reasons I love Western Pacific. Besides the fact that I was already uh, pretty much hooked on trains with my Lionel and my Marks. And uh, so, at any rate, I have a large collection of the more modern Western Pacific trains, even though some of these are 25 years old. And as you can see, it's pulled by a Lionel Alco. And uh, I think this was made, it's an 8361. It was made between uh, 1973 and 75. And it had the predecessor of the Pullmore motor with the uh, rubber traction tires. The tire, singular. Uh, it's got uh, the plastic windows, it's got headlight lens, and of course the light you could see through the number board. Uh, unlike a lot of other really cheap Alcos, although this only has a two position E unit. It's really a nice little, little unit. Not something I would have gone out and bought uh, because there's no um, 
coupler in front. But a friend of mine was yard sailing, selling, and wandering around from place to place to see if he could find any bargains. And I had taken him to the uh, Western Pacific uh, Museum when we were on the way to Quincy and told him it was my favorite railroad. So he saw this and the matching B unit and decided that he was going to get it for me. So he did. And I was surprised that it pulls so many cars. These, uh, these are big cars and they're heavy. And these are all metal uh, trucks and they're sprung trucks. Let me pull the first one up. Slipping a little. <laughs> This is the uh, re-release of the 6464 Western Pacific uh, from originally would have been post-war. And I'm glad Lionel added the extra 100 on the end to let everybody know that it, it wasn't an original 6464 would have been worth about uh, $200. In fact, it says new in uh, one of 1994. And we'll move up here. And this is a K-Line. And I've never been particularly fond of K-Line power units, but I have have a real appreciation for their um, consist, uh, both passenger and uh, freight. And this is really a beautiful car. And it shows, I love the fact, like I said, it's got, it's sprung trucks. It's got two little coil springs up here, just like the Lionel has. And it says shock protected shipment and cushion under frame. So we're carrying on the pr tradition here. And this was a Western Pacific release from a TTOS show in Sacramento, California in 1995. That's why it's 6464, 1995. And it's got black on the ends and a black roof. And it's a pretty sharp looking car. And then those are all my only two Lionels in this consist and everything else is K-Line and I think K-Line did a splendid job with these feather cars Let's see the door open part way on this we've got the green, the yellow and the blue and you'll see here it says rides like a feather and that is what they advertised on the outside of their box cars rides like a feather obviously a reference to the feather river and this was one of the uh i believe this was made toward the end of the series and it's got the brown roof and the brown ends and they actually um, added a ladder which is obviously painted black and you'll see the others are just molded into the for, into the shell but did a pretty good job I wasn't fond of the K-Line uh, caboose that they put out with all these box cars. It 
just didn't quite cut it. It was uh, too toy-like and really not as detailed as the Lionel caboose. So I decided I was getting the Lionel caboose. I gotta figure, my gosh, like I said, these, these are, I think I got them all like 25 years ago. <laughs> So this is WP731, and you can imagine me and my buddies inside this caboose with the old gentleman drinking soda pop, sitting on a bridge. So let's run it around a few times. This just about takes up my whole layout. I must say it's a pretty slick looking train. So, at any rate, if you've got a favorite uh, railroad line, fallen flag, or still running, and you've got the cars and uh, locomotives, please post them on Facebook. Pardon me. Please post them on YouTube. Or if you're in a Lionel or Kalon Facebook group, post them there. I see a lot of films on Lionel Facebook groups and a lot more on Mark's Facebook groups. So let me know what your favorite uh, railroad line is. So we'll let it go by one more time. Bye bye.